Oh fuck! What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Zarelio. We's back with another video. Ooh. So we about to react to some anime content. We about to react to my boy Vinny too. Top twenty most overpowered attacks in anime. So y'all know how it goes with me. Like, I love my anime. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. I I I love that shit, bro. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to the video because I don't want to prolong too much. Enjoy, sit back, get some popcorn, yo, chips, and let's get this shit started. Let's go. Something went off. I don't think I, it ever gets old hearing the VFX. Um, what are you talking about? With a vast number of anime around, there's no shortage of strong characters that come with the strongest I abilities and attacks. From magical fireballs that can melt stone to punches that can shatter islands, we've compiled a list of some of the most overpowered attacks in anime. So let's not keep you waiting and dive headfirst into the list, video. Though. Starting the list, we have Isaac Natero's Hunter x Hunter, bro. Sorry, my bad, my bad, I know. Hunter Hunter, you gotta be specific because somebody gonna attack you for that. Hunter Hunter, yes. This is funny because the whole time bar, this attack was get... taking place, it's the strongest villain he in still the wasn't no match for my boy Meru. But the fact that anybody else would have fight Gramps, they probably would have lost. To be honest. Nadero himself is one of those old dudes who you see in anime that are exceptionally overpowered. A bit like Yamamoto was, from Bleach. Was, okay. I feel such, like we didn't see enough of him though. I feel like there was so much more we could have seen of him. And I feel like he, because, I don't know, it feels as if he felt weak. But probably, probably because he was in the face of, honestly at the moment, the strongest. Maybe if Gon didn't, maybe before Gon's transformation, I think Merwin was the strongest that we knew of all the characters introduced. Overpowered cards in their arsenal. So Nadero's he made, most dangerous attack by far is weak, still this one. This manipulation of Nen technique allows him to create a large Buddha statue with many hands that looks extremely conjurer, I think. intimidating. That was Nadero can use the Buddha as a medium for performing some exceptionally devastating attacks that would certainly kill most but of I the hunters in the series, considering yeah. how powerful each attack is. I those Even the very King strong. of Ants wasn't left unscathed by these moves, and he'd succumb to them if he wasn't the strongest creature around at the time. The most powerful ability amongst his different hand moves they messed was up the letting Merlin play uh, the Shogi, the awesome game was. Attack. That's the attack he got awesome so... and coupled with the destructive uh, power, it was definitely one of the coolest moves we attacks. saw. Uh, with perhaps one of the most epic comebacks when it comes to duels, we have Bercoli's time watch this one too. sword art online. I keep my, the sword art alicization art that was animated to perfection like bruh it was too much for me at one point because i was like cheese like my eyes had to take a break because the amount of like flashes and oh man they was going crazy with that man. it's like solo leveling if you haven't watched that that's kind of what it felt like animation wise obviously this is before that but you know this is hard now, you already know that an ability or attack is overpowered when the word time is involved with it, one way or another, and this slash is no exception. During this time, Bercoli was on his last legs, and it seemed like he was going to lose against Vector, but he did the unthinkable. With the time, yeah, the best thing about just one arm, Bercoli he turned everything around. Was that the animation, soundtrack, he was so and the intensity nice. of the moment made this attack have even and more smart. Of an impact. Vector even when, instantly became even when, non-existent, um, and Bercoli making Kirito that was, was in just his so little, badass. It's, even when Kirito was in his little vegetable state, he still tested his strength by acting like he was about to attack Asuna, I think it's her name. So it was like... One thing to defeat your opponent in the yeah, present, but it's something completely different when you cut time itself and destroy their past. He's kind of like Jiraiya Sensei. Dodge it. Shifting anyway. our focus onto the next villain, Zagred's Vacuum Wall. Zag is a cheater, bro. Word magic is so OP. Like, I feel like they just pulled magic out the ass in Black Clover. Mud magic word magic really i just man but yo people hate black clover but i feel like it was a really good series i would take away some arcs maybe maybe like the nah let me stop, let me stop. but one of the third eye people word soul magic yeah 
Zagred is an upper class devil known as the Word Soul Devil. He has the mind boggling ability to create different magic attributes by talking about them. It's something like that thing Inumaki does in Jujutsu Kaisen. Stop. Imagine Inumaki's telling something different. to disappear and it just vanishes off the face of the earth. That's how strong Zagred's ability is. The technique can't be overlooked, but the most powerful attack Zagred pulled off with this ability was the Vacuum War, capable of pinning down some of the strongest guys around. The ability itself was incredibly overpowered, but perhaps Zagred didn't make the best use of it. Even though you can't directly kill someone off, you could still create attacks by that would person, only I'm be bound by something. imagination. But I feel like he was over, he was underestimating his Moving opponents. on, we have Gilgamesh's Enuma Elish from Fate Crazy Grand enough, Order. I don't think I watched... I don't think I watched Fate Grand... I watched Fate Unlimited Blade Works, Fate Stay Night, but I don't think I watched Fate Grand Order. And this is on my list to watch. I just have not watched it because I don't know where to watch that. <laughs> But the face series animation has always been top tier. We already tier. know that That's in no doubt. every we face know this. series that has come out from its really confusing timeline, Gilgamesh is one of, if not the most overpowered character ever. And yeah, what does Gilgamesh an OP is... character have? An insanely even more overpowered attack that can wipe anything off the face of the earth. He used this when he faced Diamat, and you already know that something serious is coming when he touches one of his weapons. The sound was effect he, was, was he Berserker or Archer? at the same time, in perfectly this. capturing the intensity and power of the attack. I feel like he was Berserker you really if you're doing this. Anime, but when but it might I don't know. It's just golden. You could even compare it to a nuclear explosion, and Theomud could do nothing but just disintegrate into dust and bone. He truly deserves his title as King of the Heroes. Yeah, Archer. The next attack to make it on this list is the one performed by Makima from Ch Bro, this was probably the creepiest I've ever like the creepiest for me. Man. Because I just felt as if like she was like, uh, it was just like, I didn't understand how it happened. Maybe they're gonna explain it more. I didn't, I didn't want to spoil myself, but I was Now this like, attack uh, doesn't have any name in particular, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it is by far one of the most overpowered techniques shown in the series. The technique allows Makima to crush any target she wills over long distances using an invisible force. It's an insta-kill attack she shows off while dealing with Sawatari's gang. The requirements for the attack are that she requires a higher place such as a shrine, as well as a bunch of human sacrifices who are then told to utter the target's name. The sacrifice as well as the target are taken out instantly in one of the most brutal attacks put on display in the already very gory anime. The sheer fact that it kills off characters from exceptionally far locations makes it similar to the death note like Yagami uses. No villain is truly safe with this attack in play, making it one of the most overpowered yeah, in the Makuma, entire series. something more about her because she is... Bro. Now you thought gold experience was strong. Well, say... I'm honest with y'all, I don't watch JoJo. Like, I know a lot of people are JoJo fans and I get it, but I just, it's, it's the animation. It's, it's the, not the animation, it's the art, art style. I just, it feels too strong. I'm going to try to watch it eventually, but I don't know. I heard it's not really, you got to really like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Say it's hello to Gold Experience Requiem. Let me see though. The name itself shows how cool this stand is, but its backstory is even cooler. Created after the stand arrow pierced gold experience, the Requiem version has some insanely overpowered abilities that can't even be compared to the normal version. The attack in question though is Return to Zero, which is arguably the stand's most powerful ability. This ultimately allows all actions and willpower to revert to the state of zero, effectively nullifying them and causing them to cease to exist. This somehow translates to having the opponent yeah. experience death constantly if the opponent is killed off. We got to see this in action firsthand when Gold Experience Requiem was up against Diavolo, the primary antagonist of Golden Wind. Imagine having the ability to, first of all, kill off the strongest baddie in the series, and then make the baddie experience infinite death loops. If we're talking about overpowered That's abilities, like, then this name? one is most um, certainly broken in every way, even more so than the life creation that, um, ability Gold Experience Captain could already use. Did, did to, uh, Gold Experience Requiem. Arachnar, Up next, we have an attack one. used by our friendly neighborhood mage, Free Ren. Nice, yeah, I never seen this. Free Ren, as a mage, has vast amounts of experience, and considering the time she spent mages living, she has an anime entire Someone, arsenal full of extremely like, powerful spells. The good spells. ones, like Rudius and her, speak for itself, they have considering so her exceeds even vast potential. Year -old demon, and by but they be doing, like, too. The crazy offensive magic shit she uses against, is like, in a league anybody. of its own, with spells like Judron. And I love the way mages carry themselves, the good, strong ones, because they don't have to really move an inch. They can really just stand and just, like, 
boom, cast the spell and not like it's cheesy, it's cheesing, but it's OP. Jim, a destructive lightning spell mm. that causes Personally. massive damage to the target. But out of all of those spells, the most overpowered one, in our opinion, mm. is her Hellfire Summoning Volzenbell. Free rent effectively creates a massive blast of fire in front of her that has a wide area of effect. The attack can melt more or less anything, considering that it's incinerated a large column made entirely of stone. This would mean that the temperature itself is upwards of 1500 degrees Celsius. Now, normal humans would literally vaporize at that point. She doesn't have a bunch of other spells that may be stronger conditionally, but currently, this spell seems to be the most overpowered offensively overall. I probably wouldn't watch this, but it'd be good to have a backstory on it. Switching over from elemental attacks, we have Gojo's Hollow Purple. I ain't gonna lie, to see, now I'm looking at it, because at the time I didn't notice it, the CJ was a little bit kind of. I want you a little bit, not so much though. Me, I try to set this as my background. That scene when he's holding the holding the the purple, but bro, my comp that shit was too Gojo strong. is regarded as the strongest jujitsu sorcerer in Jujutsu Kaisen, so it's no wonder that he'd have some of the most broken abilities in the series. His base power is in a league of its own, considering that he's seen as a literal juice ex machina that can deal with pretty That's much ridiculous. any adversaries in a heartbeat. Gojo's his an most anomaly. powerful attack by far though is not the not hollow too, purple uh, technique. Uh, by merging friends. his blue and red infinities, like, Gojo Gojo's can an produce anomaly. an imaginary mass that can move across large distances, leaving pure destruction in its wake. He used this on two separate occasions. Once he used it against Doji Fush. But Toji was like, I'm done. I, I lost. I'm Chiguro, like, a dude who was exceptionally scream. strong in his lost. own right. The outcome? <laughs> Doji with a large chunk of his left side missing. The other time was against Hanami, a special grade curse spirit. And that I don't forget how mad Gojo was when Hanami escaped. Hanami, the attack you could tell he was forest in its path and Gojo uses this attack pretty casually. The sheer destructive potential makes this one of the most overpowered attacks we've seen yet. Kyoshiki, Murasaki. That's fine. Speaking of the most powerful attacks held by the most powerful oh individuals, God, the next entry we have is All Might versus Off was Oh my god, that was a boxing ass fight. It's All Might's United like, States of Smash. It's just the emotion that was behind it. The the fucking metaphors, the man, it was This the voice acting? Bruh. That shit. Man, look at that shit, bro. All Might is the number one hero, or should I say was, and for good reason. He could single-handedly take on the strongest villains around and was the only one who could fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with All For One, the primary antagonist of the series. All Might yeah, doesn't go for the awful fancy stuff like having All magic attacks or state, launching right? large orbs of power. Instead, he goes for good old smashing stuff. And the strongest attack in his arsenal All is the United damage. States of Smash. The sheer destructive All power All of the damage. attack can be considered at at least sector-busting levels as All Might concentrates all of his power into a single punch. The impact is strong enough to create a massive crater and a twister that can carry buildings. How strong would the punch be to create um, a natural was... disaster, hey? Too bad we got to see this attack only when All Might was on his last leg, since who knows how powerful it would have been when he was at 100%. Either way, the attack was powerful enough to take out All For One, which is a testament to the attack's strength. It might have been painful for him to hold Before that position. Before we reveal the top 10 of this list, we have Rimuru. Rimuru was... Yo... One of my favorite anime characters is definitely Rumu. Not because of his strength, but because of like mainly because of his personality and how he just wants peace. And in order for him to get peace, he has to go through extreme methods to get it. And so he makes sure that he has the strength to back him up. And I love that a lot, bro. My YouTube watermark is literally is literally it's not easy getting 10,000 souls for a power-up since it keeps taking out 10,000 opponents. Way. Well, it seems like a difficult feat, out. but not when you have an overpowered attack like Megiddo in the cards. The spell harnesses spirit magic to form tiny water droplets manipulated by water elementals. These droplets act as lenses, concentrating light into lethal laser beams. We got to see this overpowered spell when Rimuru used it against the entire army of the Kingdom of Falmouth, absolutely decimating it in a matter of seconds. The attack even ignores magical resistance making it a surefire method of disposing of large numbers of enemies. Death and destruction were everywhere, and there was no one who could oppose the magic. The attack was so overpowered that we literally felt sorry for the soldiers who had to face Rimuru's <laughs> wrath. <laughs> He's the way he ran out and got popped.
If you're enjoying this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Let's get of back course. to the video. We Starting off the top 10, we have Benny Maru's Crimson Moon. Bro, it makes me think like if you're not at Benny Maru's level when the, when a threat comes, I don't know if they're going to continue Fire Force, but if you're not at Benny Maru's level when the real threat comes, you probably shouldn't be fighting because if this is the kind of people that's really a threat, that you had to go through this length to hurt. Because he did, he did Sundial, it didn't work. So you had to use Conroe's Crimson Moon. God damn. That shit don't ever get old, bro. Oh, it's just the way it just you. Like, bro. Like, you have to really watch it in real time to hear, like, everything go silent and then your ears just tear apart. God, that you must already God, got the idea that overpowered oh, attacks oh, oh, oh. have equally overpowered attacks since that's the set dynamic. Just like the rest, this attack deserves some super hype considering the power back in it. While fighting the demon, and this is not the whole like Benimaru hoisted it far to into the sky, the sky above sky was Asakusa to make sure that the area didn't suffer the after effects. He turned the whole he sky red, bro. Instantly used Crimson Moon, which resulted in a massive explosion that was dyed crimson. Its namesake is very accurately given since it quite literally resembles a crimson moon. The attack was so strong that it instantly vaporized the demon infernal, easily putting it in multiple sectors of busting territory. Yeah, I don't know that and was boy, the strongest watching moves. it play out on a screen thought, was a truth I feel like he had more to do. The best he, sound more he done, ever. It just know. hits your brain in the right places. How do you even get this kind but of hey, strength, since we're on the topic of flaming overpowered attacks. Oh my god. Your darkness follow my light? Who decided that? <laughs> Boy, Escanor is that guy. Can't bro. help but mention the next entry on the list, which is Yo. Escanor's Pro. Hands down, a very, very well written character. From his from the beginning to the end, Escanor was that dude, man. The purest heart. He deserved the strength that he was given. Bro. Pride flare. I just have so much respect, bro. His confidence, when he showed up on the scene for the first time, I had the meanest goosebumps in the world because I was just like, bro, who is this? Just like Benny Maru, Escanor is considered to be one of the strongest. Like, I suggest y'all, I know Seven Deadly Sins fell off, but I suggest y'all really go and really watch, like, watch of that Seven scene, Deadly Sins. The Lion Sin of Pride has the grace Sunshine. His power is weakest at midnight, but begins to increase from sunrise, reaching its peak at noon. Now, at that time, Escanor can be considered nigh invincible, but even before that, he's still a force to be reckoned with. One of Escanor's craziest attacks is Cruel Sun, whereby he literally creates a miniature sun. It gives off so much heat that it's able to melt armor from a distance. Now, that seems like an overpowered attack in itself, but the real city-busting move is his pride flare. Escanor causes the sun he created to flare with such intensity that he, that he causes the lake to instantly the vaporize. The fact that he was this strong when there was still some time to noon, the time he's at the peak of his power, shows just how absolutely devastating the attack would be if Escanor chose to like use Full power. Even with all of that power, the attack still is as powerful mm. as a nuclear bomb. Speaking of which, the next attack on this list is Shadow's. Yo, Shadow is just like he's an anomaly too, because I feel like I don't know the cons. I, like, I love the anime, but I would just. I am atomic. Shadow's OP is here. When he used this move, oh, that was it. The sound effects, bro. Y'all about to hear it, bro. Considering Sid's strongest Bro. technique, I Am Atomic is the result of his magical research and training. The principle involves accumulating and compressing magic into a single point before releasing it. The energy unleashed resembles the chain reactions observed in fission or fusion processes, resulting in a nuclear explosion. Sid uses this technique to decimate several miles with the power enough to create a massive crater and distort the space around him. And this overpowered blast is just a base version, which shows that the attack has even more potential. Just by being on the level of an atomic bomb makes this attack powerful enough to destroy cities, proving just how overpowered it truly is. Bro, see was that guy. He just was trying to build Next his own story, Next we have bro. Naruto's Six Path Ultra Big Ball Ross in Shuriken. I just, me personally, this fight was good, but I felt like it, 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 I didn't, the part where like um, Sasuke use the other beast and gain the chakra to make his Susano strong. Naruto doing the three-headed tail fox, it didn't feel it was enough. 
Because I feel like there could have been a different... Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he was just already stronger than Sasuke prior to him doing that. And it just Sasuke just matched his strength. But I feel as if, like, they could have gave Naruto a new form just for that fight. Because obviously Sasuke ain't getting another form. That same form he got. Now, this name is an entire mouthful, so let's just call it the OP Rasen Shuriken moving forward, okay? Crafted by Naruto himself through the immense power given to him by the Sage of Six Paths, this is an unparalleled ultimate technique. This is the strongest jutsu in Naruto's arsenal, and for good reason. While in Six Path Sage nice. mode and fully transformed into Gurama, Naruto creates two shadow clones, merges them, and creates a massive Gurama with six arms and three faces. He then creates a tailed beast ball Rasen Shuriken and a Six Path Big Ball Rasen Shuriken. Again. The destructive power okay, of this so maybe combination just, was maybe enough to overpower strong. Sasuke's he... Indra's arrow maybe... <laughs> and can destroy entire cities yeah. with ease. The Never size mind. is absolutely massive to the point that anyone smart. Oh my god, they could have destroyed the whole Lee village if they wanted to. Maybe the whole the whole damn ninja ninja world because, bruh, now that I think about it. Damn. enough would run as soon as they saw it coming but it would probably still be too late by then this attack is a spectacle of raw power and precision capable of overwhelming even the most formidable adversaries standing as a testament to naruto's growth Bruh. That is so fun. Well, we mentioned Naruto, so we just have to mention another attack from one of the big three of shonen anime in particular mugetsu I think that scene of Getsuka being upset, I think that's the name, getting upset, he didn't want Ichigo to do what he was going to do. He was sad, and Ichigo knew what he had to do, he had to pretty much say goodbye, because he loved Ichigo, I believe that's, if I'm, if I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments, but he loved Ichigo, so him having to pretty much give, to, tell Ichigo how to do this, so it would pretty much sacrifice his powers, it was, that was, I love that scene, I love that whole, the whole thing. But this form, I know we're gonna never get this again, but bro, this form, I hate when they do this because, bro, I wanted to see more. And maybe this is the strongest attack of that form, but Prior damn, to bro. using this attack, Ichigo I just goes been into dead. the final Getsuga Tensho form. Getsuga Tensho has always been Ichigo's go-to attack, but this is when he literally becomes Getsuga itself. His entire image changes and stands as, by far, one of Ichigo's coolest forms. His body even emits Black Rayatsu, which looks super intimidating. So, of course, for such a powerful form, Aizen he needs so to give shocked. it an even more powerful so attack. Happy. And that's what Mugetsu is. Ichigo slashes towards his intended target. This action unleashes a towering surge of Dark Rayatsu that rises menacingly, enveloping the surroundings and casting a shadow over the sky. Anything caught in this powerful blast faces significant damage, highlighting the devastating force of the attack. Too bad for Aizen though, since his poor villain had the bad luck of being the target of this attack. The fact that Ichigo loses all of his Shinigami powers shows that this attack is nothing to scoff at, and the power comes with exceptional consequences. <laughs> Continuing the last two entries, the next one we have is the Bunch Run Gun by Luffy. Is that a, was that an order? No, this punch, Luffy Gear 5, with this Bajrong punch, Bajrong gun, he was forming, yo. To put into terms the, the sheer fuck? power of this attack. The fist was the size of Onigashima's island. We'll first talk a bit about the guy who took it head on. And his little ass arm just pushing that little shit down, Kaido. bruh. Kaido is the emperor of the sea and is also known as the strongest Kaido put up a fantastic fight. This I don't care what nobody behemoth. says. Kaido is number one. Top three strongest in, in the whole entire One Piece. And I say this because Kaido went through all the odds. He fought through so many people too and still was whooping ass to the very end where like this is pretty much finally getting exhausted. And on top of that, he's been injured. And two, he's holding the island up. He's holding the island up, bro. So it was like, you got to really respect Kaido. Never say that he's weak. He ain't weak. He went through I can't even count like, what, like 10, 15 people? And still was whooping ass. He's amongst right? the strongest of pirates. Nobody else would have won this but Luffy, to be honest. To be an almost insurmountable and that's Luffy winning by sheer willpower. 
a hero's had to face. Now, did I mention how his devil not fruit allowed him to turn into a fire-breathing dragon? Not just strength, dragon? but I mean, how bro. impressive is that? To take out the such a threat, stronger. you need a truly overpowered attack. And we got to see this in the form of the Bajran gun. Having unlocked the power of the sun god Nika, Luffy reached a completely different level of power and the Bajran gun proved to be his strongest attack. There's nothing too complicated about the attack either. It's just Luffy making his fist into the size of an island. It was literally as big as only Gaishima, dwarfing even the massive dragon form of Kaido. He then imbued the fist with conquerors and armament Haki before punching Kaido into oblivion. How do you even evade an island sized fist? Nearing the top three, we have Natsu's seven flame dragon's power. Not still being able to absorb out of the dragon is such an asshole because nobody else can do that. Being one of the strongest wizards in the series, as well as being the protagonist, already gives you massive potential, and there's no better way to show off that potential than with a massively overpowered. I do love when all the, dragon, the, all the dragon keepers came together. Attack, especially when you're up against the main villain of the series. During the, the final keepers, fight with Agnologia, the, the Dragon King, Natsu brought out all the big guns. Having been enchanted by Wendy with the power of six dragon slayers, Natsu proceeded to use that power to increase the power of his fire dragon's iron fist, which became surrounded by rainbow colored energy. This resulted in a super cool looking fist that held all of that power and it was strong enough to knock out the strongest villain in the series. Hey bro, Dragneal, is that his name? No, not Dragneal. Um, I forgot the name of the villain, but bro, he was vicious. Cause he and he look, but he lucky helped them out. Cause when he took out that one, um, one of the, the the strongest wizard, and one 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 big, um, slash that kind of showed you that like this was kind of an asshole because he they won by the power of friendship, bro. The power of like this is the only way to beat them by combining powers. But that punch still doesn't compare to the next entry, which reaches planetary levels of destruction. We the punch we're talking about is Saitama's MC. serious punch. Bruh. Hey, I tried this workout, the whole 100 punches, 100 hitters. I didn't do the 10 kilometer run, but I did everything else. Hey, my body be losing weight, but that's calisthenics. That's borderline calisthenics, to be honest, so. And he beats somebody who regenerates consistently. Anybody else? Anybody else with a loss? Any of the top is heroes with a loss? Amongst the most Simple powerful that. characters around, and not I just think. in his own series, but rather amongst most anime. He's so strong that we haven't ever seen him throw anything more than a casual punch until we got to see this beauty. That is, Saitama's serious punch is just that. Him punching a bit seriously. No special power. I wonder if they're gonna the punch, ever give him no a punch that actually just a makes good him old punch. The serious worried. punch was so powerful that it completely wiped out Boris's planet wiping beam and served as the fatal blow to the overpowered alien. Not only that, the punch was so overpowered that the shockwave resulting from it parted the clouds way across the earth. Other than that, the serious punch was also powerful enough to completely disintegrate the elder centipede, making it look like a simple bug. The serious punch is definitely one of the most overpowered attacks we've seen, and considering Saitama's seemingly limitless potential, it may even be stronger than the destructive power we've seen up until now, making it a planet-busting move. In the whole time, Saitama is taking damage. He's not feeling it. He's just kind of just like. Speaking of planet processing. busting moves, the next entry we have is Goku's Supreme Kamehameha. This fire was so. People hate Super. Me personally. I Everyone who super watches lot. anime knows about this move, and we aren't embarrassed to admit like, that we may I just have love, tried I guess animation-wise, I, right? I don't Gamet. like the fact that Goku risked the whole entire Earth civilization just for a fight. And I feel like we shouldn't just let that kind of character flaw be just a character flaw. That is a problem. And I hope whoever writes the rest, because I feel like growing up, Goku was somebody of compassion, somebody who looks out for the world before himself. But the way Super wrote Goku... They made it seem as if like he just doesn't give a fuck about nobody but just fighting and doing whatever he wants to do to, be, to become the strongest and hoping that somebody else is going to be stronger than him. And I feel like that's just really like selfish of our favorite, one of our favorite MCs growing up as kids. For people who watch 
Dragon Ball Z growing up, y'all know what I'm saying. You feel me? Mehameha is just that iconic. This energy attack is Goku's signature move and has been used as a finishing attack against a large that's the whole reason this whole thing Over happened time, in the first Goku place. Goku has developed different variations of the attack and it's increased in power and destructive capabilities along with Goku's own raw power. After gaining perfected Ultra Instinct, Goku also further amplifies his Kamehameha to the Supreme Kamehameha. He used it against Jiren and the force was enough to severely injure the overpowered opponent. We already know that Goku's Kamehameha could easily bust planets during even the Freezer Saga, but considering his current level of power, it's not a long shot to say that the Supreme Kamehameha should be able to punch a hole through the universe. If that's not overpowered, then we don't know what is. But even that move doesn't compare to the power shown by the last entry on this list. Prepare to have your mind blown. The most overpowered attack amongst all is Seymour's Giga Drill Break from Gurren Lagan. I was just gonna say, I thought it was Gurren Lagan. <laughs> Gurren Lagan. Power is so immense it defies all comprehension. Gurren Lagan isn't just any anime, it's a realm where the scales of size reach mind boggling proportions, unlike anything seen before. At the pinnacle yeah, of this stands the Super to Tengen Topo Gurren Lagan, a so mech so colossal to... it dwarfs the entire universe. Itself. Give a to but watch hold on to your seats because the sheer magnitude of this mech's power doesn't stop there. When it comes to its signature move, the Giga Drill Break, we're talking about an attack that expands to a staggering 20 times the size of its already incomprehensible original form. That's right, 20 times larger than a being that's bigger than the observable what the universe. Heck? Imagine an attack that spans billions oh. upon billions of light years. Its power oh. is nothing short of unfathomable. With numbers such as these, we didn't have to think much before placing this oh, attack no, I gotta on the watch top this. of our list. Yeah, is it, what year is this? Cowboy Bebop Oh, that's hard. And with that, we're wrapping up this list of the 20 most overpowered no, attacks this. in anime. I'm watching it. I don't, I don't care. But look, man, hey, I thank y'all for watching the video. I hope it wasn't too long. Without further ado, hope you guys like, subscribe, comment. These are my socials down below. Please follow them if you want. Um, you don't have to. Once again, please follow them if you want. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And stay positive. Practice the art of being unbothered. Peace. But until that time come, I gotta get there oh, I'm just a lost boy, tryna find my own path Cause just me versus me, like a money bag Niggas don't know my pain or what I've been through Don't treat me like your brother,